Hello, America. Welcome to our class, which is still, thankfully, we're inside and not outside. Today is not one of the days when students ask to say, please, Dr. Fessler, can we go outside? Does anybody here want class outside today? No? Okay. Me neither. I mean, I think after, I mean, we, I mean, half of us might die if we were to spend the next hour and 15 minutes outside with the coats and stuff that we happen to have with us. So let's look at what page in the handy hand book should we be on? You're not on the appropriate page, sir. Page nine in the handy hand book. Are you on the, are you on the right page? Yes, yeah, she is on the right page, therefore she feels privileged to laugh. Would I, would I suggest that somebody else might be on the wrong page? So let's talk about costs, variable costs. Costs are costs, and are you ready to write? Are costs that vary with the number of units produced. Variable costs are costs that vary with the number of units produced. Fixed costs remain the same regardless of the number of units produced. Fixed costs remain the same regardless of the number of units produced. Have you watched videos? Listen to audio? No, I did my own research. You did your own research? He's got this page filled in. I'm wondering what, I, what he's going to learn from me today. Uh, so variable costs vary, with the, uh, vary with, the, uh, with the number of units produced. Fixed costs are, uh, remain the same regardless of the number of units produced. And recognize that those definitions that I've just given you are in total. So the definition, these terms are both, both variable costs and fixed costs are defined in total. Fixed costs remain the same in total regardless of the number of units produced. Variable costs vary in total regardless of the number of units produced. Okay? <clears throat> so, on a per unit basis, life might be a little different. Variable costs on a per unit basis, well actually, uh, usually I give an example, and I'm even, I'm not wearing the appropriate brand of shirt because I always talk, imagine, we're going to imagine this is a cinch shirt, which is a, very often a type of shirt that I'll wear on this particular day in class. Um, and so let's imagine that there's $4 worth of cloth in this cinch shirt. So if we make one cinch shirt, if a company makes one cinch shirt, TJ, where's TJ? TJ, if we make one cent shirt, $4 worth of cloth, and he's dodging, he doesn't want to talk, what, uh, how much cloth, how much money are they going to spend on cloth for the shirt? $4. That was pretty rough, wasn't it? Uh, Denise, if we make two shirts, how much? $4. Per shirt, but how much in total? If we make two shirts, $4 worth of cloth in each shirt. $8. Okay, very good. Now, Adam, that's okay. I talk fast. Um, Adam, blood. Adam, if we make 10 shirts, oops, sorry, this twice, how much are we going to spend? $40. $40. You get it so far? Pretty easy. Sadie, if we make zero shirts, how much are we going to spend? Zero. dollars. And that's very, that's unique to variable costs. Okay? So zero units, zero dollars. So let's talk about fixed costs. Imagine we are spending $100 a month on a sewing machine to sew this shirt, okay? So if they make one shirt using that sewing machine, how much are they going to spend in total on that sewing machine? Laura Cornelius. Uh, $100. $100. How about two shirts, Samantha Cornell? $100. $100. And Erica, how much, how about 10 shirts? $100. This is, this is really rough. And then Victoria, how about if we make just zero shirts? We still spend $100. That's the difference between variable and fixed cost. Now, let's use that same example, and I'm going to ask a slightly different question. Let's talk, how much were we spending on the cloth for the shirts, Alex? Four, four dollars. dollars. Thank you. Because it wasn't four pesos or four euro. It was four dollars. So Jim Evans. Where's Jim Evans? Jim, hi. Uh, how much money are we spending on cloth on the first shirt? How much your money, Jackie, are we spending on cloth for the second shirt? Four dollars. How about the tenth shirt? Char, these three, I'm not sure I've had three people in alphabetical order before. Four dollars. I'm going to have to shuffle cards very early in the semester. I can see that already. Uh, Four dollars. How, so you get, you see the pattern? So variable costs on a per unit basis are fixed or constant. Variable costs on a per unit basis are fixed. 
kind of in quotes because we know they're not really fixed, but they I mean fairly constant, okay? Stephanie Harris, how are you? Let's talk, how much were we spending on the sewing machine? $100. $100. So, Catherine, if we make one shirt using the sewing machine, how much are we spending on the sewing machine per shirt? Make one shirt, $100, how much are we spending per shirt? It's, it's supposed to be very, very easy. $100. $100, so what's $100 divided by one? $100, awesome. Matthew Hutchinson, how about if we make two shirts? A hundred divided by two. So we're to, uh, so the question is how much per shirt? How much per shirt? Fifty dollars. Very good. Uh, Brandon Kanoi. Brandon, how about if we make ten shirts? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. You see the pattern? It changes. So uh, fixed costs on a per unit basis are they vary? Specifically, they go down. Specifically, they go down. Okay. And hopefully, if you, uh, for those of you who will need staplers in the future, I typically bring one. Uh, you can ask me for it. Ask me for it. Uh, should I have neglected to put it out? So there, we've talked about variable costs and fixed costs, both in total and per unit. Okay. So we've talked about all that already. Now we're going to talk about product costs and period costs. Product costs are the costs of making a product. Us accountants, sometimes we are not very creative at naming things. <laughs> you know, variable costs vary. Fixed costs are fixed, they're constant. Product costs, they're associated with making the product. Period costs are all other costs. You know, it's, it's, this is an incredibly boring definition. It's just everything, it's all other costs, right? So product costs, those are the interesting ones to us accountants, and then period costs is just the name of everything else. When do you recognize product costs in the income statement? This is kind of a review question. Anybody know, remember? When do you recognize product costs? Stereotypically. Ooh, wow, what did you say? Did you say something, Heidi? No, no, she did. Huh? When you sell it, it's precisely correct. <laughs> Thank you very much. It flew. Brett, your card like flew. And so, so product costs are recognized when the product is sold. When are period costs recognized in the income statement? The month end, or I think of it as in the period incurred. Period costs are recognized in the period incurred. Okay? So there we have product costs and period costs, okay? Let's look on the next page. What do I have written down there on the next page? Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Ooh, 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 ooh. There are three categories of product costs, okay? Three categories of product costs. One, two, three, eins, zwei, drei, auf Deutsch. Direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead, okay? They're getting an idea, though. Hi. You were, some of